comes for a particular uh, uh, search, search process or search system and we have realized that in a particular search system there could be two blocks there will be two partitions two portions of it right so and we have observed that there will be some subsystems within a search system which will be focusing upon uh, the information extraction related activities and there is a second portion which will be mainly uh, focusing upon the preparation of these documents preparation of these results preparation of these databases or the data documents right document objects so it is very clear that it is very clear that this information extraction portion is is having some kind of some some kind of routine activity within a search system which will be mainly conducting or managing or taking care about this information retrieval information extraction related works and so it is we can refer them as an information retrieval block and second portion where we are preparing all these documents preparing all these uh, extracted uh, documents extracted uh, uh, data from the internet or from the web sources uh, so that second block is taking care of all these basically related activities so let's start uh, uh, discussing or sharing the notes so today's focus is naturally is to understand these uh, basically the uh, different components so right so when we say a uh, search system is uh, one of the key application of the information retrieval so information information retrieval ir as a process you can say i as a process because again like we have taken this definition of a search search uh, as a process search as a system so there is a slight difference right similarly uh, you can have uh, this impression on the ir also so ir sometimes it could be a process sometimes it could be a pure uh, system also information retrieval system you can refer them but uh, most of the instances ir is used or ir is adapted as a process right like in the search system we are saying ir information retrieval is used as a process right because it is one of the process it is one of the block which is adapted which is basically achieved in that system in both system right so here you can see because we are saying that information retrieval is basically uh, adapted or it could be used in the search system also so while designing the search system uh, we should be uh, planning our information retrieval process right so now you can see uh, in the diagram i hope it is visible perfectly visible to you so let me make it a little large so <clears throat> Uh, you can see here the component uh, and their interactions uh, uh, of a search system or or maybe so because most of the people uh, often use these two terms uh, very closely so they used to have uh, sometimes uh, ir system sometimes say the search system so they use these two terms uh, almost in analogous manner they they prefer to use these two terms almost in in, in kinds of kind of so without without any separation they are having same impression about the both term but these two terms are i i think you are clear you are having now clear vision that ir as as a process ir is a part of search system it is not a search system so search system means uh, you need to include these these all components these all computing subsystems then only you can say it is a search system right so you should be having this uh, you know whenever you are talking about search system there is a different impression whenever we are saying information retrieval uh, ir we, that is a different that is a different uh, impression right so you cannot uh, use these two, these two terms interchangeably right you should be very careful whenever pushing to search system term whenever we are saying something about information retrieval term right so both are different impression both are different term both are indicating different indicating to the different set of computing systems right now you can see very carefully like uh, in the previous lecture studies class we have taken uh, six different blocks right six different blocks maybe six different subsystems to be planned uh, uh, whenever we are designing a such system so you can now you can carefully correlate them right and uh, it is important to have a basic idea and uh, uh, you can say basic clarity that how each computing block how each computing subsystem will be interacting right so whenever we are designing a system or maybe whenever you are drawing a block diagram so this diagram basically is a block diagram because we are trying to draw uh, different computing blocks or different subsystems and their interactions so so as a student of computer science whenever you are modeling the system 
right because after understanding the requirement modeling is the second second step so you can say the conceptual model or you can say the logical model also so so this block diagram is is obviously so any in any block diagram you should draw the blocks the blocks are maybe the such systems and their interaction how they are interacting for which purpose they are interacting right so that's why we have taken all the possible elements so you can see we are having uh, these uh, uh, boxes uh, right brick size bricks bricks kind of boxes and there is this data stored we are referring so we have three different three different instances of data stored so all of could be of same nature also and then we have uh, there in the right side uh, of the figure we have we are having these uh, documents actually which could which which could be of uh, type uh, image uh, video web page or any kind of data right so we could have because uh, maybe in the very first lecture we have taken this topic uh, data uh, possible type of data so there could be uh, 15 or 18 types of data objects uh, we could have from the internet or from the web services so uh, naturally the source uh, source for a search system uh, uh, is these kind of documents right so uh, that is that is some something from where this uh, search system start uh, you know uh, preparing themselves or preparing himself right so this is something uh, is, is a, a minimum requirement to prepare or uh, to be ready with a search system uh, moving to the left side towards left side you can see here there is a user uh, available right so uh, so user is having some kind of uh, you know perception or conceptual idea about the uh, basic search is going to start so uh, this this basic uh, search of user is based on some knowledge or some uh, impression about the needs uh, and it is it is indicated as a cloud because it is uh, it is basically uh, it is residing or it is uh, uh, existing on the user's cognitive space so whenever we are uh, indicating these kind of entity which are uh, basically virtual entity you can say uh, because uh, these search needs or this uh, knowledge base all of user must be a virtual entity and uh, they must be residing on the user's uh, user's mind or user's cognitive space so whenever in the block diagram we are showing all these entity uh, each and every entity should be connected each and every entity should be connected to some or indicated towards some or contributing co contributing towards a sum uh, uh, uh basically uh, participating in uh, participating object or participating block right so user is one of the important uh, block of the search system right similarly uh, there is this, this vertical uh, uh, this dash line is shows vertical blocks is shown you see this this indicates as a interface to the user so so your outside user or user to the search system is interacting with these interfaces or these uh, you can say the boundaries and whatever he is submitting, whatever type of query, whatever type of interaction he is uh, sharing to the search system or to the uh, search uh, information system, these these interactions will be uh, basically pushed into the system boundary, right? So these dashed lines are showing two logical boundaries. First logical boundary is basically uh, uh, there uh, with the with the user's presence and the system presence. So first logical boundary is, is is between user and the system so it is available in the in the very first it is basically available in in the in in the coincidental with the gui actually the second logical boundary of the system is basically lying or it is available or existing between this the logical block of the system with the physical block of the system right so uh, like in the in the in the maybe fifth or fourth lecture we have indicated that whenever we are designing the search system or any kind of system uh, this system should have at least three layers right system should have three layers system should have three levels so you might have a uh, uh, idea about the three schema architecture of database so maybe during your btech or b engineering days uh, so there is this specific topic called data independence and three schema architecture so three schema architecture or three level architecture for system designing something is preferred most of the system designers are preferring this three schema design architecture because uh, by having three levels of separation, by having by having only two separation and having three levels, uh, you can run a system with efficient. Uh, it's, it's basically maximum efficiency performance. You can see. So uh, separating these uh, system entities is one of the required part because of some reasons, right? So you might have some this some idea about this that. Why we are separating these entities? Why are we are creating three levels? 
right? So like in the case of database, whenever we are separating uh, separating schema, we are, whenever we are creating three schema architecture, uh, it is the purpose that uh, you can expand any level schema, you can change any level schema at any time. Whenever we have this kind of separation, you can perform these uh, you know extensions to the system. You can uh, basically perform any maintenance or any uh, basically modification on any layer without affecting to the other layer. So if if we are creating these kind of logical separation, like here it is shown on the dashed line, vertical dashed lines. So if you perform or design or create these kind of separation uh, between entities, uh, you can perform you can perform any extension, you can perform any enhancement to that particular certain level without affecting to the other level entities, right? So that is something you can have whenever we are creating these kind of separations. So you cannot say that these separation are something uh, are called uh, abstraction or uh, independence. No, these are not like that because to perform or to design abstraction and independence, you need to have some kind of uh, elements for that, right? So let's go into these uh, these these components. So first of all, so you have seen these two extreme entities. So on the left side, we have kept user uh, from my side actually from my left side. This user presence is there, and then the right side we are having this presence of uh, these documents, these documents which are probably extracted from the web source or from any source actually, right? So uh, for for basically uh, a search system design, you should be at least, so whenever we are designing a search system, you should be designing at least these components, components listed are here. So you can see there are there are three components, computing components or subsystems planned in the right side block, this block, and there are three components, sub, three subsystems planned in the, the second block, which is called uh, retrieval block actually. This, this right side block is often called as a you can say the pre-processing block or maybe sometimes it is referred as an indexing block or indexing block because the purpose of this this very first block is to is to prepare the indexes is to prepare the indexes index terms to identify the index terms uh, because a search system is the performance of search system is entirely based on the index terms so whatever index terms you have prepared the performance of system is based on those set of index terms, right? So you can see here, there's a database called index data or corpus, right? So that's why it is very critical. So this indexing thing is a very important. So you might be working on your dissertation work on any area. So whenever you are dealing with text data, whenever you're dealing with data set, uh, data, uh, which is of nature text, and you need to prepare a search system or a retrieval system or any prediction system also, so during this pre-processing block or pre-processing step, you need to identify these index terms, right? Naturally, there are various uh, traditional or fundamental techniques to identify indexes. There are different uh, advanced terms or advanced uh, approaches to generate the index terms. Right? That is that is the approach, right? But uh, basic basic uh, you know the purpose of keeping the indexer system into the search system is to is to identify the index terms and prepare our index data right because you cannot keep all those thousands or maybe millions uh, index terms into the bag you need to uh, again you need to again arrange all these index terms in a certain way so that it can be efficiently used for the retrieval purpose right so you can see that's why this this identification this this you cannot say that this uh, right side block is identified by the name of indexer because uh, indexing is something very important it is very pivotal or critical to the search system performance right uh, similarly you can see here after a parallel or maybe you know perpendicular to the text uh, uh, indexing there is a computing block called text transformation this term, this particular computing block is basically there is there to prepare or to be uh, make a uh, make a set of all the documents, right? So uh, for both text transformation and indexing, we will be having same data set, same uh, text input, right? So now you can see we have a set of documents from the internet, set of documents, set of images, set of any kind of data objects extracted from the data from the web source or maybe from any isolated source after extracting the documents data 
right? Naturally, to perform this extraction, to perform this text acquisition, we will be using uh, these components called crawlers, these components called feeders, or maybe any other thing you can have. Uh, but traditionally, crawlers are used. So crawler, crawlers are used to identify the source and to extract the source from a particular uh, web source or from a particular uh, uh, you know uh, storage device or any kind of source so you can so because uh, you know, within the text acquisition block you could have these crawlers these feeders and you can design your own crawler to identify a particular portion of information from a particular source like if you have a website so if i if i give an assignment okay can you can you extract can you prepare a database uh, for me uh, where uh, we are having the email IDs, names, uh, phone numbers, and research area of all the faculties in all the NITs. So we have 29 NITs, so can you go for this kind of database? So naturally, you can create your own crawler, right? You need to define a crawler in the text, text acquisition phase. And this crawler will identify first, it will, it will identify the source, naturally, the institute website. Within institute website, it may go to the departmental websites, and from there it will fetch the name of the faculty, his area for the research, his phone number, and he, his email ID. So likewise, you can go for each websites of NIT. So you, uh, you can externally provide the links of the NIT, or maybe your crawler can be can be identifying these sources and extracting the information. So the purpose of text acquisition uh, subsystem is to identify the source, identify the information source. It could be a page, it could be an image, or it could be anything. So the purpose of text acquisition is to identify the source from the web, from the web or from the anywhere, and then extract these information. So extraction will be performed by a crawler or maybe feeder based upon the definition, based on the definition of the, these crawlers, what kind of crawlers we have defined. Like in case of Google, it could be a global crawler. It is identifying, it is extracting each and every document which is populated or which is available in the internet. So it is kind of global. So if you are defining a specific type of crawler, it could be a specific crawler, something like that, right? So, but it is not, it is not uh, uh, right to say that. It is not correct to say that uh, uh, your crawler can uh, extract all the possible. So if you are designing a global uh, global crawler like uh, uh, like uh, we are having in the Google search system or any search system, uh, it is not necessary that uh, a global crawler can extract all the possible possible information in the internet because you might have heard this term called deep web, right? So deep web are, is, is the, some some portion. Uh, of the internet or maybe you can say there is a specific area of the internet where documents are kept where records or information are available but these, these these details are these details are separated by some layer separated by some logical layer and by just because of this presence of this layer these crawlers or these simple systems are not able to penetrate that layer and they cannot get or fetch the information from that deep web Right. So that is again a different topic of this course, uh, which is called information retrieval and web deep web search. Right. So uh, I'm assuming that uh, this global uh, global crawler is able to uh, extract all the possible information in the system. Similarly, you can design a specific crawler also. So after identifying, so naturally it is based on the definition of your purpose for for what purpose you are designing the search system. So that's why it is very important. It is very important to create a specific crawler. So, right, because it is the starting point for your uh, search system. So, within the text equation, we could be having these two things. One is crawler, second one is feeder. So, feeder is basically, it is again a uh, persistent based system. It is keep checking the possible information of source. And if something is appearing, something is uh, available, it will be pushing to your system. So, this text equation will have these two purposes with these two, uh, uh, you know, these two. Uh, multi components or simple components within it, within uh, within its uh, within its range or within its scope after getting all these documents all these uh, data objects these these same set of documents will be sent to two different modules two different blocks one is text transformation second is index right so these same set of documents will be will be shared with these two parallel subsystems 
one is called indexer right indexer the purpose of indexer is obviously to identify important terms right important terms right so whatever documents we have extracted from the internet all these documents will be sent to indexer and text transformation computing blocks or processing subsystems so indexer system will be uh, basically extracting these documents uh, preparing these uh, you know index terms so whenever you are identifying index terms you should be assigning some weights to it so within indexer uh, subsystem we will be having a indexer processing algorithm and second we will be having some weighting term so each and every term will be assigned with some weights right so this is simply basically these two steps in, are involved in the indexing for index identification for identification of terms you could have any algorithm right you could it could be of any type but there there must be uh, this second block which is called uh, weighting is weighting algorithm so within indexer uh, subsystem we will be having at least these two things index identification algorithm and there is algorithm for weighting weight generation so after having these two things index term and weights we will be arranging arranging these index terms in in some way naturally it is based on some uh, preconditions some protocols also so or maybe you can say uh, model also right like in the database we used to have a model relational model or network or hierarchical similarly in the case of because we are preparing a system so whenever we are storing the data maybe it is a form of index maybe it is a form of document so you need to maintain some model so 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 basically for indexed database you will be having some model right so in the index database we will be having index terms and their possible weights or it could be possible that can we keep the relationship between these two two index terms so you, you can extend your index data in many ways because eventually your performance of this third system is in, based on this index database right so you, once once you have index database you can say that okay i have done first part of i have prepared the first part of uh, the search system now you can see uh, simultaneously or concurrently to the indexing there is a task which is called text transformation so text transformation is nothing so from getting all the data from the text acquisition you should be performing text transformation so text transformation is basically preparing all the data objects extracted from the web source and is storing into a document data store so it is a simple database it is a database of all the possible documents which we have extracted during the text acquisition with some refined way so in, during the text transformation we used we, we used to basically uh, separate some invalid some uh, noisy data from the data source right so uh, it could be it could be having lot of uh, pre process so within text transformation component we could be having lot of uh, you know text processing or text mining component like it could be have uh, stemming process it could be having other than stemming processes so there are four five different uh, small modules or small sub processes within text transformation right so we will be covering all those in the coming classes so after getting of uh, these cleaned data sources cleaned data uh, document details we will be preparing a document store and keeping all these according to the model again right so we will be having a data model for index database we, we will be having a data model for document data store so so with this process once these two databases uh, has been prepared or ready you can claim that our system is ready for use right our system is ready for use so this is something uh, analogous or similar to the preparation of your data in the database also so there we have we used to have this creation of table then after creating the database table you should be performing some kind of normalization based on the data model and after normalization only you can say that my database is ready for use right so <coughs> so basically after uh, the provision of these two databases uh, we can uh, now uh, basically give a, basically uh, give a kind of signal that system is ready for use so now this part is done okay because system is ready now, now we will be going directly towards the user so now system is ready uh, it means we can fire or we can submit a query to the user so naturally uh, if you are designing a system um, which is accepting a keyword as a query so if if this system this whole system is uh, called a keyword based search system so user will be submitting 
some kind of query to this GUI interface, right? So uh, you can see uh, there is this uh, vertical, uh, you can say the screen is shown or maybe interface is shown to user where the user is supplying his search query. So these search query will be set to uh, uh, maybe there is an internal component in the system or in the search system which is called evaluation system, right? So evaluation, this term is used for a generic purpose. You can you could you could name it as a any kind of uh, term. So uh, all the users query, all the users uh, request, data request, or maybe information request are sent to through GUI sent to evaluation system. And in this evaluation system, uh, possibly there are some components you can place. Like you can place a component uh, which might correct the spelling of your queries. There is a component which can auto correct your queries, auto fill your queries, suggest some suggest some alternatives for your queries. So all those all those things um, which assist the query related issues, right? So there there user query or search query. So in the in the, in the literature, if you explore uh, for a search system, there are various issues which we are still facing. Uh, during the query writing phase. So query formulation, query formation, query reformulation, query suggestion, query auto-completion. So there are various research issues available uh, to this evaluation system itself, right? So though, though basically if you, uh, if you are a student of information science, each and every uh, this subsystem is having some kind of research issues, right? So those issues we will be, we will be discussing or we will be taking uh, Right in the coming classes also. So uh, as far as evaluation system concerned, the purpose or, or the basic uh, objective of this system is to provide is to provide the assistance to the user during the query formulation or query formation. That is first objective. Second objective is to is to maintain or to prepare the log data log data of all the users' interaction. Right, so there is two purposes we are uh, we are having for this evolution system. First purpose is to provide assistance to the user during his query formation or maybe during his uh, interaction to the results. Right, because user will be interacting with the system only twice. First, during his query submission, typing the query phase, uh, query formation phase. Second one, uh, second possible instance of interaction will be. Once our system is able to generate some results to the user to the GUI, then user is interacting with the system or results. That is the two instances. So it is the responsibility of this evaluation system to have these all uh, interactions, these all impressions captured and maintain a log of all these things. So uh, just below to the evaluation system, you can see there is a log data, meta store. So here we are maintaining. Here, system is maintaining each and every detail about user's past query, user interaction, user liking, user reviews, all those things on the results, right? And naturally, the data which is kept in this log data or meta store is used for different purposes also. So it is that way it is shown as a bi-directional exchange of data, right? Uh, again, with the evaluation system. So evaluation system is receiving all the queries from the user and it is sending, it is sending or it is forcing uh, all of your queries, all of your queries to the ranking block, to the ranking block, you can see after getting all the queries from the user, it is pushing the data to the ranking block and ranking block is basically getting, so naturally there is exchange between ranking and matching also. So after getting the query from the evolution block, ranking block, ranking subsystem will be sharing this query to the matching block actually right so user query is basically coming from user and reaching to evaluation system the same query uh, information will be pushed to the data log, data log data store and along with it the query user query will be pushed to ranking system and again ranking system is sending this query into the matching block so uh, user query is going through these three blocks eventually these two blocks evaluation and then ranking and eventually it is going to the matching block and it, so the responsibility of let's talk about matching block. So after getting the query from evaluation to ranking, ranking to matching, matching the, the matching block is having uh, this impression of uh, you can see the query, query terms, right? So based on the 
based on the user query, based on the user type to query or keyword query or any kind of query, the, the responsibility of matching system is to perform some algorithm to perform some kind of uh, matching between matching between user query and index terms, right? So user query will be matched with index terms. That is for sure. Uh, just a minute, I'm getting some comments. Uh, okay. So I will be taking this uh, comment uh, maybe after this uh, portion. So uh, basically after uh, performing match between user query and index data, index term, based on the match between user query and index term or index data, the required or the specific or respective document will be fetched. That is for sure, right? So this matching block will have this matching block will have two levels of matching. First level is the pure matching between user query and index term. Second level of matching will be performed or maybe identified. So second, second level of matching in the matching block will be the identification of the documents, respective documents, right? Because in the index data, or maybe in between document data and index store, there is some, some kind of link that these index terms are related to this document, right? So based on the matching between user query and index term, the same system, the matching system will be retrieving the documents from the document, respective documents from the document store, and it will push to the ranking block again, right? So uh, basically within matching block, Within matching uh, subsystem, we have two layers. First layer is to match between user query and index term. And based on these two matches, we will be identifying the respective document from which these index terms have been matched, right? So once you retrieve all the possible documents, these documents will be pushed to, again, the ranking block. Now, ranking block or ranking subsystem is having responsibility to arrange responsibility to arrange these retrieve or these extracted documents, right? So he will perform some ranking. He will arrange these retrieve document, extracted document based on some, based on some relevance mechanism, based on some relevance score, relevance label, or you can have any kind of alternative terms, but the responsibility of ranking block is to arrange, is to provide a, a range or sorted list of retrieve documents. So to perform a ranking, it will have it will have some relevance mechanism, relevance factor, relevance score, right? And to perform this ranking, to perform this this ordering of the extracted data, ranking module again interact with evaluation system, and evaluation system will give some suggestions, some score, some criteria to the ranking system, some constraint to the ranking system so that ranking system arrange these documents and after performing this ranking task it will push all the results to evaluation system and evaluation system will directly send these results to the user gui or user interface right so this is basically i mean for this simple retrieval task there is a multiple time of exchange of information between ranking and evaluation so in a such system this ranking and evaluation system are having multiple exchange of information, multiple time of decision making, right? So most of the uh, researchers or most of the, you know, the system designers are suggesting that can we can we club or can we merge these ranking and evaluation system into one computing block so that we can reduce the number of communication, you know, the delay in the response of the search system. So that could be one possible extension. But uh, uh, so, so for as far as my understanding, as far as for the clarity of uh, your yours, uh, I have kept these two modules in a separate blocks, right? So uh, I hope we have covered most of the exchange of information and most of the computing blocks, right? So from here, I am taking uh, this one of the comment posted by Kuldeep. Kuldeep says, sir, how log data is logically separate from uh, each user or it is just a similar storage for any user which puts a query, right? So basically uh, in the log data, 
in the log data actually it so again it depends on how you are designing a system if you are designing a recommender system uh, the responsibility of your recommender system will be will be to will be to basically will be maintaining uh, the logs for each user because in the recommender system it is important to maintain these logs from the different user on separate area separated by each other but in case of global search system like in uh, google search google search is maintaining the search history of users uh, based on some reason based on some specific area geographical reason like it is maintaining uh, a data so nowadays it is asking you to share your location whenever you are performing search on a global uh, interface like uh, chrome and based on this uh, location or based on your domain id so they are using the network id network information to create a separate log for all the users of certain area and uh, so if you are residing in the kurchitra in haryana in india actually uh, you will be getting one kind of query suggestions while performing the search but if you are residing if you move to the country called usa uh, then you will be getting different kind of query suggestions different kind of query completion different kind of uh, query reformulation uh, suggestion during your simple search so uh, so again uh, in the log data you should be having some strategy to maintain the log so because log data so here we have placed only one log store uh, to support the functionality of evaluation system you could have more than one storage also right so you can have one log data for query history maintenance you could have separate log or separate uh, second log data uh, storage for maintaining all the all the previous results seen previous result retrieved right because uh, in in the modern context we are we are assuming that the most of the such systems are expanding expanding or enhancing their user interaction behavior right so whenever we are expanding or we are evolving right right so because in the modern modern information retrieval systems uh, this interaction part is now improving we are having more interactive or more uh, you know uh, iterative systems so you can interact with the system in many, in many ways uh, wise and all those things so you should be having these kind of additional log stores right because in the back end you can see if you see the right block which is called indexing block there are very few possibilities because this the purpose of this scan block is to maintain the records maintain the documents so uh, by having this part fixed there is a possibility to enhance or there is possibility to maintain some blocks here also right so in, in basically if you take this example of uh, conversational ir where we are placing uh, a siri and alex all those things uh, in the in the very first block which is called evaluation block we should we are having more than three data logs so if you if you go to the internet and search for the architecture of alex or architecture of any uh, voice based information retrieval they will be placing at least three log data components along with the evaluation or maybe along with the ranking system right so this 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 diagram this block diagram is of basically uh, for a traditional uh, ir system traditional search system right so these are the components which we should have at least and based on your requirement to support certain functionality to support to support certain particular uh, subsystem you could you could place any database system right uh, yeah so because uh, so for separating uh, logs of each user you could place any identifier or any approach right so it depends on the architecture of the search system so so with this i can say we have uh, partially touched upon the different uh, you know uh, functionality or objectives of each block uh, now let's go into the listing of uh, documents so uh, listing of these tasks within each block so in the information retrieval block you can see uh, we have evaluation system right within evaluation we will be performing logging and performance constraints right then we have matching components so within matching we have said we will be having two level of matching first matching will be between user query with index term and the second level of matching is to identify the respective documents within ranking block we will be having naturally scoring then relevance estimation then ranking right ranking means literally it is to arrange these documents in the uh, in some 
order, some preferred order. Then you can see uh, in the pre-processing block, which is often referred as an index block, uh, we have this text acquisition. In text acquisition, we are having crawlers and feeds, crawlers and feeds. Then within indexer, we will be having document uh, details, like how much document is important. So it is like it is a weight uh, calculation or any other. Along with weights, also you can have other uh, uh, details also. Uh, we, there we have weighting scheme or weighting algorithm. Then we have index creation, right? So there could be three different. Uh, you can see the threads of computing. So there is this term called multi-threading, multi-programming. So within indexer, uh, we are having three threads of computation. Uh, similarly, in the text transformation block, we are having parser, stopping, stopper, or stopping, stemming, link extractor, and classifier. So these are the threads of computation involved in the text transformation. So, so this is how uh, these, these different blocks has been designed, or these different threads has been identified uh, uh, whenever we are designing a such system, right? So naturally, this course is not all about these different uh, blocks and these different uh, uh, sub threads or uh, interactions. It is beyond that also because uh, whenever you want to design a basic search system, basic information retrieval system, naturally you should be planning all these components or and all these interactions. But whenever we are talking about designing a web search system, designing a recommender system, uh, designing a information visualization system these kind of systems so you should be talking about you should be dealing with other issues also right because uh, these are the naturally the computing blocks should be there but to perform or to support additional or advanced features advanced uh, operations to the user you should be placing a lot of other alternative modules or alternative options or features into these search systems right so uh, naturally in the first uh, maybe uh, uh, 10 or 8 lectures from here, we will be discussing about these components. So each and every block or subsystem will be opened and it will be discussed. Uh, but after uh, 10 lectures or maybe uh, 8 or 10 lectures, we will be opening up about these advanced search systems, right? So uh, after this, actually, uh, there are some issues involved. So these issues are coming from uh, basically uh, some literature. So this is something we, I have just gathered it that uh, whenever uh, in the literature actually, in the literature of uh, information retrieval and uh, such system, uh, there are few advancements has been happened. So, uh, so if you broadly organize these different uh, portion of research, research works, uh, so there are three broad layers. So if you see the user interaction layer, so user interaction means uh, there is a change, there is advancements in, in this area. In this area means GUI, there are a lot of advancements, there are a lot of systems, research works have been done to support or to mention some issues at this layer. Then we have, then we have this exchange between evaluation system. There I have mentioned that you need to have some algorithm for query reformulation, query suggestion, auto-completion, all those kind of things. So during this, this particular area, which I am referring as a user interaction layer, user interaction level, there are a lot of work has been done in the previous, maybe last 20 or 30 years, right? So that this is one portion of work, which most of the researchers, most of the companies or uh, organization has been done their work. There is after, after this simple uh, user interaction portion, there is second portion, maybe from evaluation system to matching or to maybe indexing portion. So from uh, ranking, from evaluation system, ranking system, matching system, and indexing. So including these three, four blocks, there is different layer, which is called middle layer, you can say. So there are a lot of work has been going on in this layer also. After that, there is a layer called physical or maybe database layer. So there are there are various works by done by various researchers in this portion also. So this this uh, uh, simple uh, uh, you can say the categorization or work uh, basically indicates the possible extension, possible works which has been done in the previous years. So broadly, if you separate these portions of systems in the three block, three separate layers, user interaction and middleware and database layer, within uh, within each layer there are various techniques, various portions which has been broadly done or broadly touched upon. 
right so in the user interaction layer you can see there are few research works few uh, basically uh, products or uh, systems or, uh, or module has been proposed to take care about the data visualization right there are various solutions which has been proposed to create the exploration interface so these terms are naturally coming from the literature or literature of these areas also so within data visualization as far as user interaction layer or labels you say for data visualization most of the people are working on visual optimization and visual tools right so nowadays there are various uh, uh, programming language packages are available to create a, uh, a different kind of visualization of the same data right so there are various uh, visualization tools are designed there are various visual optimizers has been designed right to provide to provide basically so in this layer or in this portion you can see uh, you can create a visual visually interactive interface over our top on the top of a search system so like in the previous class we have taken that radar view radar view representation of the data so you could have the same database on the bottom you could have the same matching or ranking or evaluation system but on the gui you can create these visual optimizers or these visual visual uh, enabled tool so you can provide some kind of tool some kind of operation to the user to interact with the data right so instead of typing a query in the keyboard box user can directly uh, operate on the data on a gui so data visualization is one possible direction of research work also it is one possible direction of extension in the search system second uh, level within the user interaction is exploration uh, interface so there you can have automatic exploration assisted query formulation and novel query interface so this portion this level or this type so these are the three broad categories of works which people are working so like in the last block novel query interface so uh, this this uh, conversational ir where we are uh, uh, submitting our queries uh, by voice input it is something coming into this block right novel query interface so there are various set of systems has been designed where uh, you are submitting your query by voice there are various systems uh, various websites have been designed where you can submit your query in the form of image also right so there are various uh, novel query interfaces so, so proposing a new query interface also is one of the possible area similarly uh, there are various uh, query formulation uh, assistance has been designed similarly you can have uh, automatic uh, uh, automatic exploration so you might have idea on the uh, google uh, map also so in the google map if you if you browse to certain location if you search for a certain location you can simply perform some zoom in zoom in and zoom out operation so those kind of uh, uh, operations or searches are called automatic exploration so you are exploring the uh, certain uh, information certain uh, area or certain uh, uh, information uh, based on some operations you're not applying uh, uh, i mean yourself by uh, submitting some query or by simply simply interact directly interaction right so you are simply dragging and drop so you, instead of conventional query you are going for other mediums also right so we could have this uh, this novel query interface there we are submitting some input maybe non traditional input but in case of automatic exploration you are not submitting any query you are simply playing with playing with the data i mean like in the google map actually you are directly playing with the data without submitting any query right simply drag and drop something like that so these are the five different possible uh, directions or possible area or maybe you can say possible set of solutions on which different set of people different set of companies laboratories are working as a research problem as a solution problem right the second level of it is uh, basically coming in the middleware so middleware where we are saying uh, you can have some kind of uh, data prefetching uh, solutions right uh, and actually data prefetching could be based on the user's past history or maybe user's past interest on the record it may be user based on user's past queries also similarly you can perform some kind of query observation query approximation right so in the middle layer you can perform 
other than these two also so as far as data uh, search system concerned these are the two possible uh, areas which are happening in the most of the information systems right so data prefetching is something uh, uh, most most occurring situation in the all uh, business uh, intelligence bi based systems so uh, all the data analysis system and all the bi based systems are using this feature so they are having this data prefetching in in different ways right similarly if you go with the last level last layer database layer there we are having these different uh, different possible uh, areas of work so most of the people are working on the adapt uh, new techniques for indexing which is called adaptive adaptive indexing you could have uh, time series data analysis then we have flexible approach for uh, time series data generation then in the data storage concern you can have adaptive loading adaptive storage and sampling so all these are basically taken from the research related research uh, works so these are the possible areas in which uh, most of the works has been done in the particular research domain of search system or information retrieval so this will basically gives you the idea and you can take these any of the these terms to uh, start understanding the possible extension of work possible research works which has been going on right so uh, this portion we have left because it is partially correlated to the previous discussion and it is indicating the different issues issues which we are facing on different uh, subsystems actually right so uh, with this i am uh, closing or uh, completing my discussion for today's class and uh, if you have anything to ask so let me go back to the class uh, yes just minute. okay so i have got a lot of questions okay so i can see other uh, question could the question is answered arva says sir can we say that evolution system is the sixth component of the system that we discussed today uh, yes we can place it uh, next we are saying mukul says sir what is the role of text transformation text transformation you discuss uh, it is already discussed uh, transformation text mukul uh, text transformation is partially to uh, to basically uh, you know clean the data before actual story so you need to maintain the source of the data also right maintaining a index term is one way right uh, but eventually uh, by using the index data you can uh, achieve matching between user query and index data you can claim that okay for user query we have matched some record but eventually at the last you need to supply this document to the user right so for that purpose you need to maintain the document you need to maintain the website address you need to maintain the website link you need to maintain the copy of the data right so that is one way if you are if you are not interested to maintain the data store document data store you need to always fetch the document from the web source or source mukul says again uh, uh, why we are separating indexer from document data store uh, can we perform indexer on document store? yeah <laughs> we can so indexer is having different purpose indexing is of different purpose right it is a separator so it is for efficient matching efficient performance right we cannot perform uh, we cannot have a sing single block to have indexer as well as text transformation or we cannot have same database to store index and data document data right so these things will be clear once we will be going uh, into these different modules right because each and every module each and every block is having lot of responsibility to do right so kuldeep again says sir if we create a separate log then it may be overhead but more refined but it if it's a global log then it is more difficult to extract the information for particular user uh, okay i cannot validate your statement right now kuldeep maybe uh, maybe <laughs> maybe lecture number 9 or uh, 10 we will be discussing more about these things so you need to maintain your question with you right so uh, i i hope questions are clear uh, if you are anything to